This video is going to be about mass spec, how it works, what it tells us, and how it can be used in chemistry. So first of all, what is the point of mass spec? Well, the spectra that comes out of a mass spectrometer allows us to work out the molecular mass of a sample and the molecular mass of some fragments. And from this, piece with other uh, spectroscopy methods, we can work out a structure or start to work out a structure of a sample, an unknown sample. And how it does this is a mass spectrometer creates ions from a chemical source and uses magnetic fields to analyze the sample. So if you're doing an exam, you may need to know or find it handy to know how a mass spectrometer actually works. So first of all, you take your sample, you put it in a machine, and basically it will fire electrons and things at it and turn it into an ion. It also breaks the molecule up. So if you have something like ethane, so CH3, CH3, it can actually cleave the carbon to carbon bond to create a CH3 plus, or it could cleave one of the hydrogens off to form CH, CH3, CH2 plus, things like that. It can cleave bonds and create an ion. So that's what happens at the ion source. So you get these ions created and they're then focused in a beam represented by this red line and accelerated up and this hits a powerful electromagnet just to say this all happens in a vacuum so there's no interference from outside because these ions have a positive charge magnet will actually disrupt them so if we try and force them around say this magnet is in a, a tube shape if we try to force them around this tube shape the magnet will interact with this positive charge and cause them to bend. Now this beam is full of all different fragments. So we may have um, a CH3 fragment, CH3+, plus. we could have the CH3, CH2+, plus. we could have a CH2+, plus and things like that. Just a mixture of all the possible ions that we can get. So they're fired. And because these all have different weights, you think this is a molecular mass of 14, this is molecular mass of 15, this is a molecular, molecular mass of 24, 25, 26, 29. Now when you fire it through, they split up, the beam doesn't stay focused anymore. You'll get some will have a pathway like this, some will have a shorter pathway and split off and come out here, some will have a longer pathway and come out further to the top. And they all go towards the analyzer. And this is just a computer program that registers all these ions coming in and analyzes them to work out their mz value, which is their mass to charge ratio. And this basically just tells you what the molecular mass is when you look on a spectra. Now here I've, I've told you that the higher mz values appear close to the top, they bend around less, and the lower mz values bend around more. And the reason for that it's just simple physics. If I put you in a situation where you had a piece of string tied to, say, a cannonball, and you fired a cannonball at, say, 50 miles an hour, and you tried to pull it as it went past you, you pulled it, tried to curl it around you, you held onto it, it would take a lot more energy to move it very far. So you, with all your biggest pull, you can move it, say, curve it a foot round. So this represents the really heavy thing here. It, you hardly move at all. Let's say you took a football, you did the same thing with a football, and you yanked it as hard as you could. It's going to curve more than a cannonball because it's lighter, it takes a lot less effort to curve it around the corner. That represents this middle line here. Now if we took something like a tennis ball and we fired it at the same speed and you yanked on it as hard as you could, well you're going to move it a lot further, it's a lot lighter and a lot easier to move. And that's the principle of this. You get the smaller the fragment, the further it will move around, the further it will curve around. The bigger the fragment, the heavier it is, and the harder for the magnetic field to curve it around this corner here, which is why you get this splitting. So you get the higher MZs there and the lower MZs there. So what does the spectra that comes out of this machine, what does it look like? Well, the spectra looks something like this. This is one taken from ethane, so CH3, CH3. And there's a few key things to point out on here. First thing is MZ are the is the x-axis and the relative intensity is the y-axis, so relative intensity is just saying how much is there compared to the other things. 
Now, mz can be linked directly to molecular mass. So we've got an mz value of 30. This is the highest. And if we think about the molecular mass of ethane, it's 12 plus 12 is 24 plus 3 plus 3, which is 6. So we've got an MR of 30. Well, our biggest peak is 30. So that's to say that that's the MR of the sample, the molecular mass of the sample. So if we took some random molecule, we didn't know what it is, and we got the highest MZ peak being 90, well, that's going to tell us that molecular mass of that sample is 90, which is really handy to know because it starts to show us that there's a cutoff limit, that there can only be a few combinations that, that have that molecular mass. And that would relate to CH3, CH3 plus. It's just knocked off an electron, and that's that fragment. Now, what we've got here, we've got 29, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, and so on. Here we've got 15, 14, 13, and 12. Now we can relate all of these to fragments. As I mentioned in the pre previous slides, that this can be broken up. Ethane can be split. So if I just draw ethane in the displayed formula, we can cleave bonds and create ions. So the easiest one that you may see is just to cleave this bond down the centre here, which goes to a C8, well, two CH3 fragments, and one of them have a positive charge. And then we could also cleave off, say, hydrogen. So we would have a CH3, CH2 ion. We could cleave, cleave off multiple hydrogens, and we'll have different, different structures. So 29, if the whole molecule has a molecular mass of 30, now what's the fragment that's responsible for 29? Well, that's going to be the, the CH3, CH2 fragment, isn't it? Because it's just lost one unit of molecular mass, which hydrogen is one unit of molecular mass, so it's just lost one because it's uh, the molecular mass is one. So 30 minus 1 is 29. Now 28, that means it's lost two from the entire sample, meaning that probably re represents CH3, CH plus. It's just cleaved off another one, and so on for 27 and 26, as you can cleave off these hydrogens around the molecule, all the way down to 24, where you've got C2 plus. Now, one key fact is this peak at 15. This peak at 15 is a good indication, especially if it's got a good intensity, that it's a CH3 peak, because a lot of organic molecules, which these are usually used for organic molecules, mass spec is usually used for them, have a methyl group somewhere, a CH3 group somewhere, and that has an MR of 15. So you, you should get a lot of peaks at 15, purely because, like I said, you've got CH3 happens a lot in organic chemistry. So 15 is CH3, 14 will then be CH2, 13 will be CH and 12 will just be carbon on it. So, so that's how we analyze a mass spec sp spectrum. So the the biggest the biggest MZ usually represents the MR of the sample. And then the smaller ones smaller mz values represents fragments. So if they represent fragments, we can start to build up an image of what they could be. So for example, if we didn't have a peak at 15, well, that likely indicates that there's not a CH3 group in there. And well, it can be ethane, because ethane has two CH3 groups. And it, it builds up a picture, and you can couple it with other spectroscopy techniques, such as IR, infrared spectroscopy, NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, and there are loads more out there. Some that you'll learn about at A level at a later date, some that you won't learn about until you go to university or do a physics degree or chemistry degree at university. But the key things that to remember that are these two. The big MZ value, the biggest one, will be the molecular mass. I'm going to put an asterisk here because my next slide is going to say something about that. 
and the smallest ones are fragments of the main structure. And you also have to remember that if you're ever told to predict what fragment is this, so say the 15 peak, it's CH3, you have to remember that it's positive because it's an ion. That's the way it's curved by the magnetic field uh, in the slide before because it has a positive charge. If it had no charge, it wouldn't curve. So there are three key points. Now let's look at this asterisk. Why did I put an asterisk there? Well, isotopes are the reason. If you remember from one of my previous videos, that's on my channel, and feel free to go through atomic structure, orbitals, and isotopes, and skip to the isotopes bit if you don't know what an isotope is. An isotope is just when um, an atom has a different amount of neutrons, but the same amount of protons and electrons. So you can have a carbon-12 and a carbon-13 isotope. Now, if we took ethane, CH3, CH3, we'd expect it to have a mass of 30. So 12, 12, 3, and 3 makes 30. But what happens if we've now got an isotope of carbon-13 rather than carbon-12? Carbon-13, H3, I'm just going to put a bracket because it doesn't represent that it's 13 carbons, it uh, represents the isotope, and CH3. Now that means we're suddenly going to have a max peak of 31, because the molecular mass of that is now 31. And that's what can happen. So you'll sometimes get a spectra that will look like this. You've got your last couple, and then you've got a big peak at the end, and then you may just get a teeny peak there, so that's 30. I'll just get a slight peak there, and that in, that usually comes from an isotope because it adds an extra neutron, so an extra mass unit. Or you could even get an extra two if they were both carbon thirteen, but that'd be very very unlikely. And the reason why the peak is very small because there's hardly any carbon thirteen isotopes in the environment compared to carbon twelve. So yes, just remember that you can get a, a very tiny peak at the end because of isotopes. That's it for this video. I hope this has helped you understand mass spec more and you can now analyze spectra. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos and let me know if there's any videos you want me to cover. Thank you.